Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to North Shore Live Cooper's Corner. We're live this evening, <coughs> and uh, this is July the 9th, um, 2014. July already. I mean, this the time is going rapidly. We've already had a 4th of July. I hope your 4th was safe, was happy, everyone enjoyed themselves, and that you did not forget those who gave the ultimate for our veterans that served overseas. Uh, in anywhere, in any war that we have had, um, the veterans need to be remembered at all times. Fly your flag proudly. We do. We fly our flag proudly. Uh, by our home here in the studio, we fly our flag. We are Americans. And um, we, we fly it proudly because our men and women <coughs> go and give the ultimate price the freedoms for which we uh, unfortunately take for granted way too often. So do what you can for the veterans. See if you can be a volunteer. Help out. Ask what you can do because they are our hands, our eyes, our ears, our hearts and souls when they go overseas. They fight for us. Well, this evening we have another very uh, uh, interesting program I'm sure that you will enjoy. Uh, and it requires uh, participation from you, the viewers, you who are watching us on cable or will be watching us on YouTube. Please feel free to watch us on YouTube. Uh, we have many other programs that we've had on there, and uh, we are happy to uh, announce that... Uh, uh, those programs are just as uh, valuable and viable as this program will be for this evening. This is dealing with uh, the abuse of the elderly. And uh, Camille Friends is here. Camille's a PhD. And uh, she's going to be talking about uh, the elderly and the horrific happenings that do take place. Um, unbeknownst to us, but that the court system knows what it's doing, and those that are running in the court system know what they're doing. It's just that the victim and the families don't know what is happening to their loved ones. And uh, we want to just give a plug to the uh, National uh, Association to Stop Guardian Abuse. Uh, that's uh, N-A-S-G-A. Uh, dot com. You can find it on your um, uh, internet. You can take a look at that, see what they've got up there. Everything on there is truthful. What we tell you here in the studio is truthful. I have done this program 32 years, and we are truthful with whatever we say. You are our public. You are the eyes and ears of what is going on in the communities. So this affects everyone. So without any further ado, I'm going to let Camille uh, tell about the situations that are going on uh, in DuPage County and, and in other counties. Um, and so please uh, allow me to introduce, uh, again, because Camille was on before, uh, my guest for this evening, Camille Friends. Welcome, Camille. Thank you, Bev, for this opportunity to present a topic that I am now so committed to that is going to be my mission till the day I die. That's pretty strong words. And that is addressing the abuse of the elderly. I am witnessing it firsthand with the relative, but I'm also reading articles and seeing things within my own private practice. And it's something of epic proportions. First of all, there's around 15,000 people retiring a day in the world, or in the United States. That's a sizable amount of people um, that are going to need some assistance or guidance or direction as they progress uh, through their senior years. While driving up here this afternoon, I happened to hear on the radio station that in DuPage County there were 500 cases that are pending, and they will be having a workshop, I believe it was July 30th, uh, on how to keep our uh, vulnerable adults protected. 
it was something to that um, the topic. And I will try to get more information about it, so if somebody wants to contact me, I will have the information. You better uh, give a number or something so they I can... I will give. I will give my, okay. uh, my email. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So uh, that is one of the reasons. The other reason was I was in Nebraska for a wedding this weekend. I had to make an appointment to see my sister, who's in the House of Hope, for 606 days. Isolated, drugged, incarcerated is how I would describe it. Um, made this appointment at 10.30 in the morning. She was still in bed. She hadn't had breakfast. Her hair needed shampooing. She did recognize me and said, what are you doing here? And I says, hurry up, let's get dressed. We got breakfast waiting for you. And she ate a very healthy breakfast that we had prepared for her. And because she is a woman of faith, I said, Honey, keep saying that rosary, keep praying. So we get you out of here and we take you to Hawaii because our cousins in Hawaii are waiting to see you. And she was all excited about that. So I'm trying to keep up hope uh, as we address her case. It's a, it's a sad commentary because in, this is what, it was in November of 2012 that she was kidnapped from her daughter's home in Sandwich, Illinois. Her daughter, who was given her 24-7 care, is a registered nurse. When they couldn't, uh, when they were trying to prepare for a, um, what do you call it, to take, remove her, guard, uh, her, her health care power of attorney, yeah. they had sicked the Illinois Adult uh, Services to the house. When they could find nothing, they um, signed off. So her daughter then, who lives in Hinckley, came to the house under the false pretenses of taking her to church and to her daughter's ball game, but instead kidnapped her and hijacked her to Omaha. So once she arrived at Omaha and realized what had happened, she became somewhat combative and difficult to deal with. So they uh, dumped her off in the emergency room, and from there she landed up on the psych unit. I have the intake uh, papers of, the, in, of her, the intake admission. Basically, she knew that the children were after her money, and they had found an attorney to work on the case to uh, keep her from the daughter that was taking care of her. And through the legal system, um, the judge, the attorney, the GAL, the doctor, and the House of Hope all had vested interests. For the money. For the, well, the money in the, the ho House of Hope gets $5,000 a month as she lies in that bed, locked up in a dark room. The GAL had three visits. $12,000, and I suspect what they were trying to do is establish um, a position where they would now become the experts on elder care, so families, if they needed help, or families that were disgruntled could come to them, and between the judge, the lawyer, the GAL, you know, rubber stamp, and approve things. But if she originated from Illinois, why can't she be extradited back to her home state? Well, she was living in Nebraska, but for, it was a few weeks short of six months, and it would have been okay. But see, they had worked on this emergency petition for several months, and unfortunately, the judge that they have is not rated very well among his peers. In fact, um, his peers recommended that he be removed from the bench, and they gave him below average ratings for his legal analysis, temperament, and impartiality. Yet he continues to destroy lives. At this last court hearing, after uh, the case is now up before the Nebraska Supreme Court, he's more concerned about his reelection and four years so he could retire. Oh, he but, wants a pension. Oh, yeah, he wants his pension. He wants to live well, but for almost... A year, a little over a year and a half, he doesn't care what happens to this woman, 
and there's been, I understand, two other cases like this. The GAL was a carbon copy, rubber stamped everything that the attorney that was representing the son that was taken off of executor. So there was no desire to even have anything uh, that was impartial. Uh, if you read the judge's uh, uh, brief, it's the attorney's carbon copy. So what we are now waiting for is for the um, Supreme Court to rule. And, and we don't know how long it's going to drag that because there was supposed to have been something on the 15th as far as a hearing. I understand now that was postponed. So what this whole situation is, is racking up legal fees for the attorneys. Because when I was called in for a deposition in November of 2012, we spent two days in what I would describe as a kangaroo court. It was a lot of mumbo jumbo nonsense. It had nothing to do with the expedited request for Mary Rose to have her um, power of a health care power of attorney re reinstated. I just saw it as racking up legal fees. If we break them, they will give up, and then we can do what we want. Well, she's of no value to them uh, after that because they've already received, taken her finances, and they don't need her because she's elderly, and uh, uh, they will do away with her as they did away with my own mother. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, she's on... Um, Medication that is not even supposed to be prescribed for the elderly, Seroquel. The doctor who supposedly is the medical director for the institution, he also, I guess, teaches at the university, and he has a beautiful website about the elderly and his care of them. However, he had no qualms of putting her on 250 milligrams of Seroquel, which is a black box warning not to be given to the elderly. So basically, as the website here from the National Association, you drug and you isolate. You drug and you isolate. Then you wonder why they become demented or Alzheimer's. No stimulation, no activity, no sunlight. And this is what we consider quality care. I'm sorry. I can't accept that. And that is why I've made it my commitment till the day I die to fight for the abuse of the elderly. Uh, this is um, very um, common. I'm sorry uh, to even make that combination, but Camille, uh, this is what they do. They, meaning the court system, the GALs, the attorneys, uh, and whomever is attached, even the nursing homes, because they all have their finger uh, on the pulse, which is the financial uh, expedition of their of the monies that they have they want it to be expedited as quickly as possible so that they get their fair share or whatever share they're supposed to get or as much as they can get and then they're out of it and whatever happens to the human being th that's inconsequential they that really have uh, no no care about that mm -hmm. because at some point she will fall to the wayside and they will just make a claim that it's a, a age that mm -hmm. did it uh, but when you see that she's being drugged uh, you can always do a, uh, a drug testing on her can you bring in your own physician or your own uh, technician to be able to draw blood and see what's in her system well I don't even think we need to draw the blood we know that she's got the Seroquel we know she's lost 15 pounds in six months uh, when we pay $50 a visit for an hour, she had safety pins holding her clothes up. Her hair needed washing. She probably also needed a bath. But that's the quality care that she's getting at this beautiful house of hope. Is this a, a religious uh, no. affiliation? No. The other thing, her religious rights are also abused. Her pastor from her church, she used to attend church Sundays, every Sunday. He came, he was turned away. Another priest was turned away. So her human rights, her religious rights, her civil rights were destroyed. She is being treated worse than a criminal. PETA does more for the animal care, 
for the well-being of animals than what's happening to a lot of human beings. If it's happening to Evelyn, I'm sure it's happening to a lot of other individuals. You know, uh, those that are on uh, death row that are murderers, they have visitation for family. They are able to see, talk, touch, feel, and have com uh, compassion from family members or religious affiliation. Their pastors, their priests, their ministers are able to go to them. Uh, why is it? And those are people that are violent and take lives of innocent people. Why are they more special than the special of those that are the elderly that have put their nose to the grindstone and worked all of their lives to be able to make life easier for them in their senior years? I think they really don't care about the elderly because it can become an expense. We know that Medicare is going broke. We know that Social Security is going broke. So, hey, if they die, they die. I think what they're really punishing are the people who care about the individual who's in there. We are treated as criminals. Believe it or not, when my sister-in-law died last May and I went to the funeral, I made it a point to have a visit with my sister. Why are you in town? I couldn't tell her. I couldn't bring a holy card. Luckily, she has a lot of smarts and she reads. Her one son, Mark, I believe it was, they told me, brought the Sherman County Times and there was a thank you card from one of the daughters and she read that, and that's how she knew that my sister-in-law had passed away. I had to leave that visit early. I couldn't deal with it because there I am, sitting in line. She said, why didn't you tell me? You could have taken me to Loop City. See. And why do we have the flowers? Lie, 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 because they think we are criminals or incompetent or mental retards. I don't know what they thought I was. They don't look at my credentials. I've worked in nursing homes. I've worked in nursing homes. I took care of my aunt for five years in a wheelchair. She had a stroke. She was Alzheimer's. I've got a video on that. I can show the care she got. So I'm not ignorant. I'm not stupid. But man, we are really treated as if we are stupid. I think, uh, you know, these nursing homes of which uh, evidently you didn't have any input of where she was going. You had no idea where she was going. Absolutely not. We were taken out of the, the lawyer there, masterminded it with the GAL. I made enough phone calls from my residence to get, a, what do you call that, um, from the police, a well-being check. Well-being check, yeah. They pulled the window down on my niece's house to check what she was already removed. Then they removed her to the son's house, her, her brother's house, and then from there to the emergency room. So I was going to do whatever I had to do, and I, and I informed them when I testified, I will do whatever I have to do. And this, because she needs to be out of there. And this is all? Uh, you, you were totally unaware of what was going on, uh, and they just absconded with her? They just spirited her away? It was a coalition of a couple, the, the two brothers that were taken off as executors, and a couple of her daughters. So the family is split. I think they kind of resented that Mary Chris had a very close relationship with her mother and father. She was the youngest of 12 children. So, and as a nurse, she took care of her father. He had cancer of the lung. She did an excellent job. I would not allow my sister to be abused. When she was living in Sandwich, if there would have been abuse, I would have removed her. There was no abuse. The children loved her. I've never saw my sister so happy. And to see her now lying in that bed in the dark at 10.30 in the morning and spending most of her time in that bed, I think that's criminal. Well, it is criminal to the effect that they, uh, they've spirited her away without other family members knowing what was going on. There was collusion. There was conspiracy. I mean, it's easy to see. And they moved her from Illinois to Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just to the next town over to Hinkley, Illinois. It's Omaha, Nebraska. And they don't come to visit her. One daughter is running all over the country with her son's iron uh, races or something. But she has no time to visit her mother. But she wasn't one of the co-conspirators. Um, so basically, they just didn't, they wanted to isolate Evelyn, I guess for the money, I don't know what. I, do, I don't know their motivation. I can't, I can't even comprehend it. 
And did she have her own home in San Francisco? Yes, she did. They tried to sell that. Oh, they what? tried to put her on Medicaid. Yeah. In the first month there, I guess they thought they could then have whatever they had for themselves. But a stop was put to the Medicaid because that's fraud. They don't seem to care. There's no conscience. Um, not only is there no conscience, there, there's a law. There are laws. No one is heeding the laws. And uh, if the judge isn't going to abide by what the law is, why would you think that the attorneys would abide by it? I think that's why the attorneys use this particular judge. If there's I think that lawyers who practice in front of judges, they know who they can maneuver. And there's the they help them get elected. They give them finances. They go to the same country club. It's an old boys network. So if you're long enough in the circle, you know who to use for your benefit. Now, there's a case number. We can give the case number. That's the case fine. number is up here. If anybody wants to check it in Nebraska, all the documents are there. PR 12-1422. It's in Nebraska. It's in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, what about the Judicial Peers uh, Review? Do you have anything? I do have that? something here, too. I have an article. It was published in the Nebraska, it was published October 9th, 2012. Uh, if the lawyers give most Nebraska judges good reviews. The Nebraska State Bar Association said its poll of lawyers recommended that 141 of the 143 judges evaluated be retained. By far, Nebraska lawyers believe that the vast majority of our Nebraska judges are competently and diligently serving the citizens of Nebraska, said Warren Wooded Jr., the Bar Association president. The anonymous evaluations are designed to help voters decide which judges to support. The lawyers used a five-point scale to rate judges on several aspects of their performance, including legal analysis, temperament, and impartiality. Two judges who weren't recommended to be retained are both based in Omaha. And we were so unfortunate to have the one judge. Both received below average scores on the survey, but neither one is up for retention vote this November. That was in 2012. But the judge is up for re-election in November. And he's very concerned because he wants to retire in four years. That was his gist of the last court case, his, re his retention. He no. doesn't care that she's dragged out and, and he's not making any decisions because he now wants to recuse himself from the case because it is before the, the because Supreme Court. For the Supreme Court, sure. He's going to get whatever. They may just pass it by and not do anything to him, or they may really take uh, a stand. Uh, I don't know how Nebraska is. They may take a stand and say, listen, uh, you've done this uh, too many times. Uh, we're not going to allow you to continue this. I would pray and hope, because basically 53% of the lawyers recommended removing him from the bench. And he's still there. And he's still there. He got satisfactory ratings for punctuality and efficiency. Punctuality. Being on time. Yeah, they come in, what, 10 o'clock? smile. At 10 o'clock in the morning, leaves at 2. That's mm -hmm. very... Th those are bankers' hours, and then he goes to play golf. That's wonderful. Or whatever. I don't know what he does. <laughs> I just know that what I saw that... Uh, in November, when I was called in to testify, I was very disillusioned. I knew as long as he was on the, the case, yeah, yeah. nothing was going to happen. Uh, are you familiar with any other cases that he has? Can you check to see? Yeah, there were two other cases in one of these articles. You know, I don't know if I brought it with me. But my thing is, I would like to see him put in traffic court or some innocuous position. Yeah, maybe he can charge people too much on fines, but it's a one-time deal. Well, why can't we just Get have them. them removed? Well, I mean, you're you're too but kind. He's an elected official, so it depends who votes for him. Well, this is this is the situation. Uh, when this hits the YouTube, uh, you, your judgeship, know who you are, um, and all the other attorneys know who you are, and. They gave you a very poor rating. So if you don't make it this time around, uh, that's all the better for the citizenship of Omaha, Nebraska, because you, you will not be assaulting uh, the person of those uh, voters who 
will say nay, not yea, to your vote. Also the fact that uh, if he is removed and does not win uh, his election, is there then another judge that will take place uh, for your sister? I'm hoping that the Supreme Court of Nebraska rules soon and she's out. I don't know what's going to happen because he's trying to recuse himself from the case. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know no. the whole legal proceedings, how it operates. But I thought they kind of make a determination. They read through all the um, papers, do. papers. And then there was an oral argument, I believe, in May, which were or, or one or June. Uh, so we've been looking on the website to see yeah. if she got, would get released. We were hoping she'd be home for the wedding. She wanted so to be there for that wedding. The Fourth of July well, weekend. Well, you you could not get you could not remove her for the wedding. Oh no! <laughs> and we what? have a monitor that sits there and watches you talk. That's nothing new. Fifty dollars you pay for that too. You have the privilege of paying fifty dollars. And how many fifty dollars can you pay to go visit? And yet we know good mental health, stimulation, interaction, doing things with them. But no, she's locked up, incarcerated, in this beautiful house of hope, which I think it's, I, I don't call it hope in my mind. I use another four-letter word. Well, see, they do that. It, it's mind games and it's uh, semantics because if the assumption is that there's hope, then, you know, uh, everybody will think it's good, kind, and uh, faithful. But it, actually, it's evil uh, in its entirety. And uh, you uh, are making the statement it's fifty dollars to visit. They charged us one hundred and sixty dollars for one hour, and there was a babysitter to watch my husband and I uh, with my mother at the uh, Warren Bar Pavilion downtown Chicago, which is a um, an Esformis Morris Esformis uh, purchased. Uh, house or uh, um, um, uh, assisted living mm -hmm. uh, because before it was a Masonic uh, uh, endeavor. It was a uh, past potentate. Warren Barr was a past potentate here in Illinois and it was for all those who are Shriners and Masons that if they needed to have somewhere to go that was for their comfort. And then they sold it to Morris Isformis, who is, you know, most uh, uh, undesirable, I could say that and be polite, mm -hmm. most undesirable. Um, and I would just tell our viewers that uh, if you, uh, my YouTube is down here somewhere, you'll see it, <laughs> um, and please connect on there. You'll be able to see and hear this story uh, again, there, although that's my um, website, but that's okay, Bev.Cooper's Corner, there it is, my YouTube. And you'll see this story, and you'll see other stories, and I think that, you know, voting is coming up. Use your judgment, not your heart, but your judgment, because if you don't vote, people like this judge and other judges around the country, even here in Illinois, get into office when they don't deserve uh, to be uh, in that position. That's a position of honor and integrity. And I need to tell you, unfortunately, I have not seen any of that in any of the situations dealing with seniors and elder care. Actually, it's not even care, it's elder abuse. When you go to speak up, they don't allow you to talk. But it's okay if they murder your mother. That's what they did with mine. They murdered my mother. So, so you please, had first hand information. Yes, I, I, absolutely uh, touching, hands on. Mm -hmm. I know I, I'm most anxious to give any deposition because I have all the information that's necessary. Mm -hmm. We've taken information, we've given information. And um, Camille, all I can say to you is please do not give up. Oh, no, I plan to do a documentary. Um, since you called me last night, this was a kind of a fast preparation, so I don't have everything. That's okay. That I wanted to present here, pictures and things. 
but I am planning to do a documentary. I have a film writer. I have a couple of people that Good. are on standby, they but know. I want to get my um, documents in order and an outline so that they have uh, something to follow. And because I think this should be, and I'd like, I would appreciate any volunteers that are listening to this that have any writing, film experience, legal. Tell it out there, just, you know, you're there. there. Is that so we can basically, I, I'd, say, I'd like to say put a stop to it. I think the human condition is such that the forces of good and evil, sin and virtue will always be with us, so there will always be evil people, but hopefully we can minimize but good always conquers evil. Well, it does, but there will always you know. be, and <clears throat> I want to minimize it. Well, we can do that. <clears throat> Pardon me. Why don't you give a phone number or something where if there's anyone out there that does uh, have uh, documentary uh, experience or background, yes. filming or writing, whatever, they can help. Maybe they themselves are troubled by this situation from a court wherever, either in Illinois or wherever anybody's Any seen state. this. I think this is USA. I USA. Think, oh. I think it's in every state. And unfortunately, you look for a revenue stream, and they found a revenue stream, and I think they're going to use it. Oh. And they're going to maximize it. Because most elderly people don't know how to fight for themselves, and some of the children don't know how to fight for themselves. I think in my sister's case, if it hadn't been for my niece my, and myself and my brother and my sister and a few others, um, this case would be a dead case. Give a number where they can reach you. Okay, you can reach me at 708-383-6770. Or you can also reach me at, uh, on my website. Uh, contact us at chrcinc.com. You have to write out the word contact us at chrcinc.com. I would appreciate hearing from people. I want to support people that are in, in similar circumstances, and I believe we're, we'll have strength in numbers. Well, uh, strength in numbers for the right thing, and that's what we're doing, the right thing, mm -hmm. because uh, we, we can only fight uh, as long as we are cohesive and we are together. Uh, you have firsthand experience. I lived this firsthand experience. Uh, you are living this firsthand mm -hmm. experience. Uh, hopefully for you, this is a good turnout and your sister is returned uh, without any harm, further harm that's been caused to her. This is a terrible thing that she has gone through. But as long as she is returned, you can certainly be able to take care of her That and her daughter will be able to assist. Oh, definitely. But in the meantime, she's lost her birthday, Thanksgiving, Christmases, graduations, weddings. She can never get that back because of their selfishness and the legal system. I blame the legal system. Uh, she can never re retrieve that. All we can hope is to go forward. Forward. And I believe, being a Christian, I do believe that maybe God chose her to be a spokesperson because she's a strong woman. And I think uh, in her strength, and if we can get this message out, it can be... A light for other people. Well, the, she's being used uh, as a uh, an implement uh, from God to be able to do that. Uh, people are seeing this. I'm sure those that are up there in Omaha are aware. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're not, they soon will be aware. There are a lot of individuals that are shocked that we have to pay the $50. They're <sighs> shocked that we can't call her. They're shocked she can't get letters without them being pre-screened. You can't do a package unless it's checked. Uh, I mean, she has lost her, is worse than prison. I mean, she is like a criminal. In fact, there were a few people at the, at the home were questioning me. I said, oh, yeah, we're the criminals. Yeah. And she's the victim. The victim, sure. Because they said, sure. why do you have to sign in? Oh, because we're criminals. We don't know how to treat an elderly person. We don't know how, what is good mental health. Even though my whole life has been dedicated to good to mental health. I've been in nursing homes. I've worked with a psychiatrist. I've been on a psych unit. You ask me, I can tell you a lot of stuff. And then I'm going to have some incompetent GAL tell me who doesn't have a, a, a probably doesn't even have one course in psychiatry or psychology, uh, rubber stamping what this attorney is dictating that she should do. That she couldn't go to the funeral because she just couldn't do the handle the stress. Give me a break. Oh no. Give me a break. No. Give me a break. 
Oh. You know, we're not that stupid. You may think we are. We may look stupid. I don't know. But please, give me a break. Well, we need to uh, now uh, mention again the National Association to Stop Guardian Abuse. There it is. Please and go on that website. It is so informative. So informative. And, and these people in that group, they help fight this situation. They are strong, they are knowledgeable, and they have uh, enough behind them to be able to make comment on those that are doing wrong to the seniors. That, uh, National Association to Stop Guardian Abuse, or otherwise known as NASGA. NASGA, they will hear that, mm -hmm. NASGA. Uh, if you uh, are in any further uh, need of any uh, other assistance, they can uh, point you in the right direction of where to locate it, where to find it. There are stories on there that are more than heartbreaking. I, I have to tell you that I was on there with my mother. We made the front page on there, and it was totally heartbreaking because after they murdered her, they pulled 29 teeth, and they took out the gold from her teeth because my brother was a dentist, and he put gold crowns on her teeth and gold inlays and gold fillings, and they only left her with three teeth in her mouth, and they put a uh, GI tube, a gastrointestinal tube, to feed her. Um, she died, and I didn't even know that she died, of starvation and dehydration when she was perfectly healthy and normal to eat and to drink. And the uh, nursing home, it's Warren Bar Pavilion, with Esformis, Morris Esformis, who owns it, uh, was charging, I don't know what they charged with your sister. It's 5000 a month. Uh, I think they were charging 15000 Well, it's a different um, But Because this was downtown Chicago. Yeah, right. But they were charging $750 per x-ray for her chest. They did, by the way, six checks, chest x-rays in one day. Six in one day. I know, I got the bill, I had to pay it. I, I even called, uh, and I said, there's a fraud going on here. What's going on? Well, we'll have to check our files and see. Well, they took the money and they ran, and they've been running ever since, not only with my case, my mother's case, uh, because our judge left the state of Illinois. She left in a hurry, uh, and there's two other judges that are off the bench. They're li they left in a hurry, and uh, the theft of a uh, insurance uh, a uh, fraud company uh, that was uh, supposedly, uh, 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 you know, d doing um, a uh, check as far as uh, that uh, they would be responsible for monies lost when there was no need to have a bonding company. Uh, my mother didn't want me to be bonded, but my attorney that we had for 27 years, she is the one that let us, she's the Judas goat that let us down to the slaughter. She's the one. And Karen Bowes, you know who you are, because we know who you are. 27 years, why did you do this to my mother? Why did you do this to us? 27 years, and they stole every penny that my mother and father worked for so hard, so diligently, all of their lives. $1.5 million. Wow, wow that's tragic. Wow, we that didn't have funny. money to bury her. No monies, oh my God. but the GAL, I want you to know, bought a million dollar mansion in Malibu, California. Wow. And that Judge Kawamoto, who left the state of Illinois in a hurry, uh, she's the one that was paying David um, uh, Martin, David Martin and his daughter Melissa Martin, GALs, uh, for communing with my mother's spirit for two years after she passed away so that they could use up all of her money. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of dirty work oh my that God. goes on on the 18th floor in the Daly Center, probate court. We've been through probably all of those judges. We've been there seven years. Well, and they are dirty, dirty, dirty. It's all it's a, it's a connected little clique. You know, there are certain ones, politicians, that have the powers to appoint the judges, and they just play into each other's hands. This that you uh, showed us about the judge having uh, a bad temperament, he, he was uh, 
uh, didn't know really what he was doing on the court. It was uh, come hither and nigh, whatever. Uh, this is the same kind of uh, configuration that Judge Lynn Kawamoto uh, was, and by her own peers, they didn't want her. They said she was no good, and she was never elected, never elected. She was always appointed because she was the money maker. She was the money maker. And I can tell you, <laughs> she certainly made it off of us mm -hmm. and squeezed my mother's life to a fare thee well and didn't give a damn. As long as she got her money, the GALs got their money, and Mr. Troush got his money, the bonding agent that was never even needed, and Karen Bowes got her money, and Miriam Solo got her money. That was absolutely ridiculous. And that they kept me from even seeing her for 10 months. Jesus. 10 months. We couldn't see her. That's when they were pulling her teeth. Oh. Yeah, they, were, but they just pulled her teeth and took the gold and ran with it. And, you know, if she has to be exhumed, I'm not happy about that, but I will tell you that that's, all my, that's my evidence. And she herself, her body will speak for what they did to her. And um, the wrong will be corrected and, uh, you know, justice will be done. Why this even came about, we don't even know. We don't even know. At what kind of point, at what point did you f find out or f thought what your thought pr processes were, why they did this or how they did this to your sister? I mean, she was fine. I think once she removed the oldest son as her executor and her deceased husband did the same, then the vendetta started. Oh, there was a reason. Oh, yeah. He, he was going to get back. So he's, he had the locks changed. He started digging through stuff while she was living in Illinois. Oh, see. And he was working on that temporary guardianship, which the judge violated. I kept renewing it every 90 days. It was When we went for that uh, emergency uh, health care power, that got dragged out. Everything got dragged out. I mean, this, attorney, this judge played into this attorney's hands. Well, you know, I offer all of those people that I've named to come on the program. Please, come sit here or send a statement or anything, I, 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 you know, I tell you publicly, you're more than welcome to contact any media, any social media, mm -hmm. uh, or come here and, you know, you can say, hey, uh, the law allows me to do this or that or whatever, but, you know, there's also the law and then there's whatever you think the law might be. So, you know, um, Camille is very distressed and her family is very distressed and that's very understandable. And we would like you to participate. And if you can, um, this is on cable. It's going to be on YouTube. Where's our YouTube again down here? It's uh, coming up, coming up, whatever our YouTube is. Um, and uh, there it is, www.youtube.com slash North Shore Live CC, Cooper's Corner. And you'll see this. But if you would like to uh, help in any way uh, to stop the abuse of the elderly or the disenfranchised or the disabled or anyone that's being taken advantage of by the court, please, you can take a look at this YouTube or you could contact me at my um, um, email. It's uh, bev.cooperscorner at yahoo.com. Uh, if you wish this to be kept uh, um, anonymous, that would be fine or confidential, however you want to put it. I certainly would uh, abide by your request. But whatever you would like, if you're having a problem, we would love to help. Uh, you can also contact uh, probatesharks.com. Uh, they will be able to give you some information on what to do. Uh, and if you need to go public, remember, the only way to clear up uh, the bad is to let the sun shine in and when you show and name names and tell what's happening that's when the sun begins to shine because these people can't hide in the dark anymore they hide because they threaten you I was threatened in that court and you know I always uh, tell them they can come on the program and uh, 
you know, we just will not allow this to go on any further. If you have a parent or a, a sibling or a, a someone in a nursing home that is being dealt with harshly for no reason at all, if the court system is giving you a hard time, if your GAL, if your attorney is not doing what the attorney should be doing, you can either contact the ARDC or the judicial uh, review, the judicial um, uh, uh, group <clears throat> here in Illinois, or wherever you might be, they certainly have them all over the, the USA, and uh, bring light to the situation. In Celeste's case, we want to help. We have her here because we want to help. What is happening to her is wrong. What is happening to her sister is wrong and is evil. And if you are a priest and you are out in Omaha and you would like to see Celeste's sister, you would, like, you would like to give you know, a communion, you would like her to have her uh, uh, feel that you know, God is still with her, uh, please do that. And if you need my assistance, please contact me. We will have you on the program or uh, call me and we will connect with someone out there in Nebraska, uh, one, someone from the Archdiocese, and we will make that happen because there should be no reason to keep Celeste's sister from not uh, receiving uh, the blessings of the church uh, from uh, a, a priest, whoever it may be, and that's very important. So the Archdiocese, I may just contact the Archdiocese here in Chicago to see what they're doing or can do in Nebraska. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, I uh, met the Cardinal up at the um, Cardinal Bernadine Cancer Center uh, a couple of months ago while he was going through chemo. So um, I wrote to him, he wrote me back, I, I will help as best I can with whatever I can do for you, Camille, and your sister, um, and uh, I will do it. I, I am telling you this, kindness. and I will do this. I will do this. Yeah, I know. You have the empathy because you've been there. Yes. And that's how we just have to kind of keep supporting each other and make that circle go bigger and bigger so that people who want to run for office or want to run for judgeship know that it's not going to be an easy help. Um, well, it's not going to be a hop, skip, and a jump. See, I personally think every person running for a judgeship or as a politician should have psychological and intelligence testing before they're even allowed to get on the ballot. That's a question I wanted to ask you. I, I'm glad you brought it up and, um, because how do we know these people are stable? We, we have no idea. I will tell you, I have had uh, many thoughts <laughs> regarding uh, Judge Lynn Kawamoto, not knowing if she was stable or not. We know that um, Miriam Solo is not mentally stable. We have documentation on that. We haven't brought that forward, but it's, it's there to be had. Well, there was a judge. It was, there was an article in the Chicago magazine. They told her she needed mental, health, uh, mental yeah. care. She was, 18, I believe, 18 years on the on bench. bench? legislating in other people's lives when she can't even legislate her own life. Well, that is a sad commentary. I, sad commentary. You know, when she when she or he as a judge sits before a, a, a group of people in the courtroom, we are assuming, and that's something you should never do, assume that these people are stable. They are, number one, honorable, Number two, loyal to uh, the Constitution and the flag that they serve under. Number three, the oath that they've taken, and that they are stable of mind to know right from wrong. And if there should be a hint in any way, shape, or form that something is awry, they should inquire and stop the proceeding to continue further on what the question is that may cause someone to have been brought in that courtroom. 
you know, an honorable judge goes a long way, and that judge could be in office. People will vote that judge in oh, I because they are fighting. But unfortunately, we have a lot of sociopaths, borderline personalities, a lot of character defects that are detrimental in officiating in that capacity. Yeah, they're in the courtroom. They mm -hmm. sit on the bench. Mm -hmm. They sit on the bench. We don't know if they're taking medication, let alone if there are psychiatric problems with them. But we have no idea. And why should we, as the innocent, be brought into that court and be assaulted by someone who is so out of touch with reality, being, uh, having and being given the ability to make uh, vast judgments of uh, wrong uh, findings and then uh, go away laughing as uh, Judge Kawamoto did mm -hmm. in my case and when I said to her, I don't even know what you're doing in here. And she laughed in my face in the courtroom. She laughed. She thought it was a big joke. That's why I feel that there is something that is probably very wrong with Judge Kawamoto. So if you think you have her in your neighborhood and she's in Texas, please be aware that there may be a problem. And uh, that's very difficult. Uh, and I watch, I, I believe everyone should have a watch list because she's on the wanted list here in Illinois. She is on the wanted list. Contact probatesharks.com and you'll find out a lot about Judge Lynn Kawamoto. Lynn, I mean, Celeste. Camille. What, uh, Camille, <laughs> what can we do? I mean, I'm going to contact the Cardinal. I, you've got my word mm -hmm. on that. I will contact the Cardinal. You'll give me the information. He'll contact the Archdiocese up in Omaha. Mm -hmm. What else would you like the people to do if they can and will be happy to help you? Well, I, I think I, I mentioned the earlier thing about the uh, if there's anybody who has skill or competency and helping to do a documentary. A I documentary. Guess I believe my sister would want this, not for herself. I don't want it for myself, but I just want it for society. I think what's happening in society is wrong, and there has to be some pressure put on the powers to be so that their lives are miserable when they go into these kinds of occupations if they don't have the capabilities and the competencies and they don't know how to recuse themselves. See, that GAL, there's no, in the state of Nebraska, I don't know what Illinois is like, all she has to do is be is a lawyer. You can be incompetent, you can't look people in the eye, you, you don't know how to be fair, but you can be a GAL. Well, she's on someone's favorite list. Well, I think it's a favorite uh, she was able to be man manipulated. I, I looked at her as somebody who could be manipulated by that attorney. This way, she would rubber stamp whatever this one wanted. She was guaranteed clients. She was guaranteed pay. If she was working independently as a lawyer, I don't know if she could survive on her own. But if she's working for somebody who's got the powers to be to try to bring these people in, then they fit that triangle where they feed off of each other. And I just see that you, you find people who are somewhat incompetent that will go along with the show. Well, somebody has got to be doing a tag team situation here. One tags the other one, the other one tags the other one, and it just keeps going on until the financial exploitation uh, is exhausted. And at that point, they don't need the victim anymore. Okay. And in, in, um, I do have to say that Nebraska, from what I'm reading on the Internet, is trying to clean up the system. I don't really? know how long it's going to take. In fact, in uh, Evelyn's case, the lawyer did not want it going up for appeal, so she wanted to impose a $25,000 bond, and it got overruled. She was trying to intimidate us. She knew Intimid that yeah. we didn't have that kind of money to Finances. play with, so she was intimidating. And I have to say that it appears, again, seeing is believing, but it appears that they're looking at the statutes. There appears that they're trying to do something to uh, create cr uh, criteria for the GAL, other than just a law degree, it appears. But again, I don't know for a, I, I just have to watch and see. Because you have to look at patterns of behavior to see if they really are sincere in what they are mouthing. Um, 
I will tell you that uh, I'm so sorry for what you're going through, and I'm so sorry for Evelyn, what she's going through. I, I wish uh, everybody well uh, to have the strength to continue what you are doing. Uh, you must continue to do. Do not fall for the intimidation. Do not fall for the uh, assault upon your person. And uh, there was one case that I will tell you that the judge had the, um, the daughter uh, handcuffed to a chair in uh, the judge's office. Handcuffed here in Illinois on the 18th floor. So if that doesn't strike up some question in your mind of what's going on here, what is going on here, then you need to look into this because it could very well happen to you. You could be uh, minding your own business and someone will just come by and say they're going to do something to you and you don't even have a fighting chance. I need to just say one more thing here is that uh, Judge Kawamoto came from juvenile court. And I'm sure you must have read the articles about selling children in juvenile court. They had these kids from all over. Uh, I was a court watcher and was watching. They had these kids that were um, uh, of uh, black, uh, um, you know, their, their heritage, go into Mexican households. The Hispanic children were going into white households. The, they had them all, all, all over. They never uh, had any continuity, and there was really no need for these children to be moved at all. But this is a money exchange, money exchange, big money exchange from the court to the lawyers to the uh, foster placements to the nursing homes to where uh, the hospitals. Everybody's got their hand out to be able to take as much as they can. And if it won't be now, it will be later. But we need to put a stop to it. We need to put a stop to it. And what I would also like to say for sure. individuals who think they have their will, they have their trust, you have your health care power of attorney, uh, don't be too complacent because that can be removed or disqualified very easily as in my sister's case. Well, And then they have their hands in there to grab. So uh, I would want to caution people, you know, take the precautions, have those things in order, but make sure they are super tight Hopefully a qualified lawyer. We had an elder. My sister did have an elder attorney, which they disqualified her and said that her documents were not acceptable. Well, um, I so. think for this program that we have done, I think Evelyn uh, will have a um, a good chance, and um, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can get her home, so. and, uh, and make sure that everyone is uh, good and well and healthy. Um, thank you for coming on the program. This was a delight. It was my pleasure. And uh, thank you for allowing us in your home or your place of business. Um, have a pleasant evening and a very safe week. See you next week on North Shore Live, Cooper's Corner. Uh, please help if you can. Go on the YouTube. You will see other cases. And if you can help uh, Camille, please feel free to do so. Thank you for watching. See you next week.